Good morning and welcome to worship at St. Andrews. May the peace of Christ be with you. Well, good morning and welcome to worship with St. Andrews. Uh, though we may not be together physically, uh, we can still be together in the spirit. So whether you feel like standing up or staying seated, I just invite you to sing along with us or hum along or tap your toes or just do something. So here we go. From the highest throne to the earth below, you lay down your life for the likes of us, and great is the love of a Savior. Oh! 
church, a new pattern for our worship is to offer a prayer of centering. It is a moment when we remember from whence we come, the place of worship in which we now find ourselves, and open ourselves up to receive the word, the prayers, the song, the music that will be offered to us this morning. Our prayer of centering this morning will utilize the words from Charles Wesley's hymn, O Come and Dwell in Me. And if you happen to have a hymnal at home, you are welcome to turn to page 388 and follow along with me. So I offer these words to your heart and to your hearing. O come and dwell in me, spirit of power within, and bring the glorious liberty from sorrow, fear, and sin. Hasten the joyful day which shall my sins consume, when old things shall be done away and all things new become. I want the witness, Lord, that all I do is right, according to thy mind and word, well-pleasing in thy sight. I ask no higher state, indulge me but in this, and soon or later then translate to thine eternal bliss. And all those gathered said, Amen. Hey guys, I want to show you guys what I've been up to this morning. I'm making Valentine's. I bet you guys have done some of these this week. And I thought I would make some extra ones and put around my house just to remind my family just how much I love them and how important they are to me. And you can make all kinds. You know, the first one I showed you is red and white. And I've got a pink one that says, I love you. And then I have some other ones that were given to us. They were made with doilies and added colors. And a great Valentine is candy. Yum. One of my favorites is chocolates. So, what did you get for Valentine's? Hmm? You did? Those are awesome things that you got. You see, Valentine's is about love. It's about loving one another and caring for each other. But you want to know what my very favorite Valentine of all is? It's this. This one was given to me and it was given to each one of you because God gave his love through Jesus when Jesus died on the cross for each of us. So this is my favorite Valentine of all. And you know what's really cool about this one? You don't have to wait for a special day to give it or to share it or to make a heart to give to someone. This is a Valentine that you can give every day and tell everyone of God's love. You can share his love. One of the best ways of doing it is by showing how much you love others. What are ways we can do that? How can you show others? Well, you can do simple something as simple as collecting food for people who are hungry and bringing it to the church and letting us share it with others. Maybe you could show how much you love your parents by helping pick up around the house. Because I know at my house, we always have stuff that gets laid down. And it's really, really nice when you pick those things up and help out. How else can you show love? How about giving a hug to somebody? How about just listening to somebody when they need to share what's on their mind? There's all kinds of ways. Well, you know what? I think today we can share with God how much we love him. And this is another great way you can share love for others and share love for God. And that's by praying, simply praying for others. Will you join me now so we can pray? Thank you, God, for your great Valentine. It helps me to know just how much you love me. I love you, God, and I want to spend time with you. I want to listen 
to your words. God, today I'm going to start showing others just how much I love them. Amen. Well, I got to get to work and finish up my Valentine's. See you later. La visión de la escritura se encuentra en la epístola de apóstol Pao, Paulo a los Efesios, capítulo 3, versículos 14 al 21, acorde a la nueva traducción viviente. La palabra de Dios se lee en el nombre del Padre, del Hijo y del Espíritu Santo. Cuando pienso en todo esto, caigo de rodillas y elevo una oración al Padre, el creador de todo lo que existe en el cielo y en la tierra. Pido en oración que de su glorioso e inagotables recursos los fortalezca con poder en el ser interior por medio de su espíritu. Entonces Cristo habitará en el corazón de ustedes a medida que confíen en él. Echarán raíces profundas en el amor de Dios y ellas los mantendrán fuertes. Espero que puedan comprender cómo corresponde a todo el pueblo de Dios, cuán ancho, cuán largo, cuán alto y cuán profundo es su amor. Es mi deseo que experimenten el amor de Cristo, aun cuando es demasiado grande para comprenderlo todo. Entonces serán completos con toda la plenitud de la vida y el poder que proviene de Dios. Y ahora, que toda la gloria sea para Dios, quien puede lograr mucho más de lo que pudiéramos pedir o incluso imaginar mediante su gran poder, que actúa en nosotros. Gloria a Él en la iglesia y en Cristo por todas las generaciones desde hoy y para siempre. Amén. Esta es la palabra de Dios para el pueblo de Dios. Gracias, Señor. The scripture lesson, lesson is found in the epistle of the Apostle Paul to the Ephesians, chapter 3, verses 14 through 21, according to the New Living Translation. We read the word of God in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. When I think of all of this, I fall to my knees and pray to the Father, the creator of everything in heaven and on earth. I pray that from his glorious, unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And may you have the power to understand as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep his love is. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully. Then you will be made complete with all of the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Now all glory to God, who is able, though his mighty power at work within us, through his mighty power at work within us, to accomplish infinitely, infinitely more than we might ask or think. Glory to him in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Friends, as we continue our journey to the center of the faith, I begin this time of conversation with a question. Who lives in your home? Now, I don't mean your, your physical address. I mean, well, imagine for a moment, imagine for a moment, if you could picture you, your, yourself, your, your personality, who you really are as a home, when the door opened, who might a visitor find there? In answer to that question, Paul in his letter to the church at Ephesus that we heard earlier offers this. I pray, he writes, that Christ, Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. That your roots, that your roots, sorry, not roots, your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. 
Eugene Peterson offers this. I ask that Christ will live in you as you open the door and invite him in. Harnish writes that the, the center of the Christian faith, and that's the journey in which we find ourselves right now, the center of the Christian faith toward which we are moving is more than a religious creed or a collection of doctrines to which we give mental assent. The life to which Jesus calls his followers is deeper than moral principles or cultural values by which we shape our actions. Being a part of the body of Christ goes beyond joining a community of like-minded people. The transforming power at the center of the Christian faith, he writes, is a living relationship with the one and only for all time original God whose essential character has been revealed in Jesus Christ. And it is through that relationship, the same love, the same compassion, the same spirit of God that was alive in Jesus of Nazareth. Well, that same spirit through that relationship has the ability and wants, is desirous of taking up residence in us. So what does that look like exactly? Well, I would suggest, as Harnish does, that Christians are ordinary people and whom God's extraordinary love is becoming a living, breathing, growing, working reality by the power of God's Spirit. And to explore that further, I introduce to you my co-preacher for the day. Church, good morning, and I am so glad that I have someone here special with me to offer and help with the good news this morning. And so, friends, I want to introduce you to my friend, Anna. Anna, can you say good morning to everybody? Hi. Anna is here for a very special reason. She has a very special day that's upcoming soon. What is that special day, Anna? My birthday. And because of your birthday, you have adopted a special project, haven't you? Yep. Can you tell us about that project? So you can see our food back here. And so I really want to um, help people for loaves and fishes car, and I want to do a drive through on um, Saturday. So, if you want, you can come to my house, or, but if you guys can't make it, you can just send money to my dad, Kevin James Ward. There you go. Do you have a, a goal in mind for the, the food collection that you have? Yep. Um, I want 224 pounds. 224 pounds, and so the 224 is a special day, right? Is that a special number? What is, what is that number? Um. So two is the second year, and 24 is the day I was born. So put those together, you have two, um, 224 pounds. 224 pounds. Now, I have it on good authority that you actually have a special goal, mm -hmm. like a secret goal. Do you want to share with folks what that secret goal is? Yeah. All right, what is your secret goal for this project for this ministry? Well, I actually have two. Do you want the biggest or the one my parents were actually going with? I would like both of them, please. I think that we would want to know the ones that your parents are going with and then the one that you believe that God can do. Um, I want 724 because I'm turning seven and it's on the 24th. So 724 pounds mm -hmm. of food would be like the secret goal. So what's like the big, like God-sized goal for all of this? Um, I really want um, 100,000 pounds of food. 100,000 pounds of food. All right, friends, you heard it here first. We are shooting for 100,000 pounds of food. I have no idea how much that is in tonnage, but I know that it's a lot. But I also know that we always have to have God-sized dreams. And I want to ask you just a couple more questions about your project, if I could. So, where did the idea come from? Why, um, why this? COVID, because we couldn't do spam bags, and then COVID hit in. 
So now we have to do like a food drive. So, and I'm like, yay, food drive. I get to see some people in their cars. I get to talk to them for a while. And then, so it's just I like to see people just six feet apart and just seeing them in the cars. All right, so having this as a special project for your birthday means that you still kind of get to see people on your birthday, even though COVID would limit the party somewhat. But as folks can drive through and, and you can reach out to the church and get Anna's address, we're not going to give that over um, the airwaves this morning, but you can reach out if you're interested to that Kevin James Ward fella that she mentioned earlier here at the church. You can find him and, and, and we can make that happen. Um, now I have a question. Why are you giving presents on your birthday to other people? I mean, don't you normally get presents on your birthday? Yes, but um, I just, we have a lot of um, toys and trucks and unicorn things. Mm -hmm. So, um, but um, I want to give presents for food um, to other people. Because I know they're sad out there, and there's COVID, they can't get um, lots of food. So I thought maybe we could do a food drive and just get food for the homeless. All right. And COVID has been tough on everyone, and Loaves and Fishes is always in need of our support. And so, Anna, I know, see, that you have Loaves and Fishes right there, front and center. And so thank you for reminding us of their ministry and the care that we need to be able to continue for everybody. So, um, so what are your hopes, what do you hope will happen I by hope, your doing this food drive? Um, I hope that people will be happy to help other people and just be happy that they I really think I'm gonna be happy to meet new people because I've never met um, the new people um, in this church I've seen like things on the TVs up in the church about them I'm like I really want to meet them and I've just seen great things about them okay well, it's a way to encourage our new folks to participate, and it's a way for just to renew that connection and friendship because we kind of miss seeing each other. Anna, when you think about this project, how does it make you feel? Happy. All right. And how do you think this project makes God feel? Happy. There we go. And um, there's this, um, well, Mommy and Daddy are having a present for me, but it's in the box, so I can't, like, see it. Okay. And so my brother wanted the box, but the present was in there. And then Daddy's like, no. And then he just doesn't really like what he, that word, no. Yeah. Most three-year-olds, well, actually, most 40-year-olds don't like the word no either. So, but it's good. I'm just glad to hear that you are going to at least get to keep one present for your birthday mm -hmm. and that I am sure James will be happy when he's able to get the box after your present comes out of it. Anna, is there anything else that you want to share with folks this morning about your birthday, about your project? Um, Offer one more invitation to come and help you? If people just want to, um, other days, if they miss the food drive, they can just bring it to the church and bring it to my dad's office only on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Only those four days. Okay. Well, friends, you heard it. You can help Anna with her birthday food drive. Remember, the goal is 224. The bigger goal is 724. And the God-sized goal, how much is that, Anna? One more time. 100,000. Anna, thank you so much for helping me share the good word this morning. Can we tell everybody, see ya? Bye. Bye. Anna, thank you. Thank you so much for that. Because Harnish writes, the only unimpeachable sign of the spirit of Christ within us is the cross-shaped self-giving love of God, shaping our values, determining our goals. You see, church, 
We are called to be in a dynamic relationship with God in which the love of Christ becomes so real that it becomes so alive, so much a part of our personalities that it influences every decision, shapes every action, touches every relationship we share. The love of God becomes the energizing center out of which the rest of our life flows. And it is the spirit dwelling within us that makes that possible. Through our engagement in practices of of reading scripture, of spiritual disciplines, acts of mercy, acts of charity, act of participation in a faith community, we ensure that the Spirit's presence in us is strengthened and deepened and becomes a solid foundation for the home being built by, through, in, and with us. Paul writes this, And may you, through the power of the Spirit, have the power to understand, as as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep this love is. His prayer and his hope is that the people, the church in Ephesus, might experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully. And then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. So friends, that's my prayer today. And I'll leave you with the same question that we started with. Who lives in you? Who lives in you? And when the door is opened by a world in great need, who might answer the door for them? Thanks, Anna. I really do appreciate you. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and all God's children said, Amen.
Trusting, leading, holding, clinging till the day you leave me Queridos amigos, their friends, let's pray. Vamos a orar. God of love, we feel your presence in our worship, which is the seal of your covenant, which is why we united to celebrate the Sunday of your transfiguration. Dios de amor, sentimos tu presencia en nuestro culto, que es el sello de tu alianza. Por eso nos unimos para celebrar el domingo de tu transfiguración. Your radiant source of light that surrounds us, Jesus, with your glory, today transports us in faith with your penetrating shine. Tu radiante fuente de luz que rodeó a Jesús con tu gloria, hoy nos transborda en fe con el brillo penetrante. We don't want to stay in the mountains, Looking for comfort, we want to walk with you through the valleys of our community's need. No queremos quedarnos en la montaña buscando comodidad. Queremos caminar contigo los valles de la necesidad de nuestra comunidad. Fill us with your light and give us courage to bring good news to the corners of our neighborhood and thus Offer the joy of your presence. Llénanos de tu luz y danos coraje para llevar buenas nuevas a los rincones de nuestra vecindad y así ofrecer la alegría de tu presencia. As your son Jesus Christ separated to be with you, we also want to pray for the transformation of the world. Mientras tu hijo Jesús se separó para orar contigo, deseamos también orar por la transformación del mundo. May we contemplate the season we are living in and enjoy the cloud of your splendor and the fire of your love revealed on the heights of the mountains. Al contemplar la estación que estamos viviendo, disfrutamos de la nube de tu esplendor y el fuego de tu amor revelados en las alturas de la montaña. We pray for St. Andrew's family, members, leaders, pastors, and all people of our community and outreach programs. Oramos por la familia de St. Andrew's, por los miembros líderes, pastores, y las personas de la comunidad, y por los programas de alcance. We pray for those who suffer from illness, for those who need a special attention, those who have a loss, their loved ones. Oramos por los que sufren enfermedades, por los que necesitan atención especial, por los que han pedido a sus queridos. We pray for the protection from COVID-19 for those who are vulnerable. Oramos por protección del COVID-19 para aquellos que son vulnerables. Lord, there are so many turbulences in our life that generates fear sadness and uncertainty. We implore your compassion and care. Señor, hay tantas turbulencias en nuestra vida que genera miedo, tristeza e incertidumbre. Imploramos tu compasión y protección. Help us share the risk of challenge of living our faith every day, enlightened by you and enlightening others in our community. Ayúdanos a compartir el riesgo y el desafío de vivir nuestra fe cada día, iluminados por ti e iluminando a otros en nuestra comunidad. Make us your radiance together with those who live in uncertainty and despair. Haz de nosotros tu resplandor junto a los que viven en incertidumbre y desesperanza. And now, Lord, we exalt your holy name with joy and devotion 
as we remember the prayer that you taught your disciples saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespasses against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, in our new pattern of worship, we will be sharing just some brief announcements to the community at the end of each gathering before our sending forth. Just a reminder that this coming Wednesday, we have our service of Ash Wednesday and Lent begins. There will be imposition of ashes via a drive through at 11.30 to 12.30 and again from 5.30 to 6.30. Also, if you choose to come then and participate at seven o'clock for an online service, you can access that via Facebook or we will join together on Zoom. And if you have picked up your Lenten kit, those are now available and you can call the church for a delivery or for more information. You will find in it ashes as well as a card with a prayer of confession that you can utilize in the service that night. As always, we invite you to check out the chatter. The chatter always has updates, birthdays, preschool news, information about a s'mores fellowship gathering at the end of the month, and more. We trust this to your attention, and we ask God's blessing upon it all. As we part from one another, I do so with the words that you heard earlier today from Paul's letter to the church at Ephesus. But this is Eugene Peterson's translation in the message. So this is Ephesians 3, 20 through 21, and the words that I leave you with today. God can do anything, you know. God can do anything, you know, far more than you could ever imagine or guess or request in your wildest dreams. Maybe that 101,000 pounds of food is possible. And he does it not by pushing us around, but by working within us, the spirit deeply and gently within us. Glory to God in the church, glory to God in the Messiah in Jesus, glory down all the generations, glory through all the millennia. And the church says yes. And the church says yes. And the church says, yes, go in peace, friends, to love and serve the Lord.